All right, yo. Now, hey guys, Paul Danner here with my son Caleb behind the camera. And we are at Latours Auto working on an older Chevy, what is this, Tahoe. And uh, Pete told me the check engine light's been on forever, but the customer uh, is recently complaining about a very rough running condition. So um, first thing I did before we turned the camera, I cranked it. I wanted to hear how it was running. And right away, we we hear an issue. So let's let's hear it run first. Cranks funny, hardly starts. I hear I hear a compression problem. I had to give it gas to get it to start. So basically, like almost like a flooded condition. I think this mic would pick up how this motor's running, sound-wise. Smell gas real bad. It's definitely not hitting on all cylinders. You know, cooling fan running on high right away, that's not good either. But the main thing, we're pretty much done already. Listen, listen to the cadence of the starter. I'm gonna do a clear flood crank. Pedals on the floor. Did you hear it? I heard it. This is a compression issue. Now we'll do a couple more checks. I'll show you guys how to do a relative compression test with a scope and we'll sync it and figure out what cylinders it is. We'll scan this too and see what codes are in it. Uh, but this is gonna be an extensive repair uh, regardless of what we find. Let's get started. We'll get the scan tool on it. We'll get codes first, go from there. So OH Chevy Tahoe. All right, yeah, so we have a coolant temp sensor circuit high voltage. That's why the cooling fan's running all the time. We got system rich codes bank one and two. Uh, I'm not worried about really the rest of this airbag body module, door switch on the driver's side. I don't care about any of that. Passenger door switch, don't care. Electronic suspension, I don't care. Fuel pump, HVAC, cluster, keyless entry, none of this matters to me. Low tire pressure stuff, radio code, tire pressure codes. Yeah, ECT circuit high. Let's go back, go to the engine. Again, this part isn't really what I'm chasing here. I'm worried about the roughness and the low compression that this engine definitely has, just based on the cranking alone. So yeah, look at my coolant temp sensors, minus 40. We can address this too, just for video purposes. Um, minus 40, yet the code says circuit high. And what you need to understand about uh, coolant sensors, thermistors on cars, they're negative temperature. So they're, um, as temperature rises, uh, resistance drops, they're opposite, negative temperature, right? One goes one way, the other goes the other way, resistance temperature. Uh, but voltage is gonna be high when you have low temperature. That's what we're dealing with here. Minus 40 uh, represents a constant five volt signal on the sensor itself. Uh, this is an open circuit. It's either open ground, open signal, or a bad sensor, and that's why the cooling fan's running all the time. But again, we have a compression issue. There's also the issue with fuel trims, and, and you can see that too. Like we're minus 30 and minus 20 on our fuel trims. And again, with a compression problem, I'm not gonna attack that. I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of those checks to find out why it's running rich. It's unusual to have a misfire cause a rich condition. It can happen in particular when it's a mechanical problem. But the fact is, again, you heard this thing cranking. We have a compression problem. So right away, initial diagnosis, coolant sensor circuit, open wiring, signal ground sensor, running rich, potentially related to the misfire, but possibly not, and then a confirmed compression problem. So let's listen to it again, how it cranks. Battery's about dead. Starters, starters going out, as you hear. Oh my goodness. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> this thing, yeah, I had a, I had a viewer like giving me a hard time for calling a car a piece of crap. We're like, you shouldn't say that about a customer's car. That's what they're driving. I don't care. This thing has not been maintained properly. Uh, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> I don't care. Let's figure out what cylinder has low compression. Let's do that first. Now we're idling high. Again, coolant sensor related. Pretty sure that's my sensor. It's broke. Let's plug it in. Let's watch. Let me get the scanner so we can watch that. One sixty one. Oh, that was hard. I uh, hear your idle come down. Why the idle speed come down? Minus 40. Computer does not know the temperature of the engine, so it jacks the idle speed up, get coolant flowing faster, runs the cooling fan on high as well. That fan should shut off if I cycle the key off back on. These look like relatively newer plug wires that are on here. What I'm gonna do first, because the battery's weak on this, let me make this fan stop, hang on. Just give it five seconds. When I restart this, that fan should not be running. As long as my coolant sensor stays plugged in. Started up much better too. Let's take a look at those trims. Not that this matters. Again, we're, we're attacking a compression problem. Just curious to see what these trims look like with the coolant sensor plugged back in. Down here at the bottom of the screen, short term, short term, long term, long term. It's better, but I'm not attacking this rich condition with a compression problem. It just went into open loop. That's why these all went to zero. O2s are all four pegged rich. So we got something going on there. You know, this isn't good either. This hot air intake, this is doing nothing. You know, what was once a cold air intake, we would normally be drawing air from this area, pulling it in from the front with the hood closed, pulling cold air in. What do you do when you take the, the air cleaner lid off and put one of these pieces of crap here? What you're doing is you're pulling in hot air. And I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't the culprit of our rich condition, because this area here, this is a different mass airflow sensor, I think. I'm not worried about this. This is just kind of video type stuff. I was gonna unplug the math and see what trims do, but right now we're in, we're in open loop. But if you look at all four oxygen sensors, they're all pegged rich right now. Uh, what's my math reading? Four grams per second. That's not too bad. That's a little low, I think, if anything, for this engine. This is a 5.3 or is it a 6 liter? I'm just curious on what this looks like with the MAF unplugged. Mass airflow sensors now unplugged. Just watching my O2s. I know we're in open loop but I'm, I'm looking at O2 millivolts to see if those come down into a normal range. They're staying full rich so probably was probably was incorrect in saying that this is our problem for the rich condition. Plug the math back in. Sorry for wavering on my a direction and approach. Um, we have a compression issue. It would be foolish of me to chase this rich condition first. We're gonna chase the compression issue. So we're gonna go our scope multimeter, our lab scope. Just gonna choose a single channel for right now while I get this set up. I'm looking for a trigger signal. Pink, blue, should be the second one in. First try, that's my zero, zero four volt. And we'll set a trigger on that so you guys can see it. We'll do 200 milliseconds so you guys see a couple of these. Well, we'll start at a low one so you see it. This is, this is your on off trigger signal for the coil, right? As it turns on, turns the driver on, coil charges. When it turns off is where spark occurs. So the trailing edge of this square wave, spark is occurring on that coil. That's going to be my sink. This should be two, four, six, eight. So the cylinder four that I'm synced off of. All right, just to save time, our setup here, guys, I'm going after my number four cylinder ignition coil. I'm on the trigger signal. Uh, this is a four wire design. 
and uh, the transistor is inside the coil. So I'm going off of the computer's control signal of the coil as my sink. That's gonna be a zero four volt square wave. And that's gonna tell me when that coil fires, which is the number four. And then I'll use that to synchronize my waveform of my starter coming from the battery. Um, and I'm using uh, an inductive low amp probe. I know they're not designed for this, but you're not gonna hurt the tool. These can produce a maximum of around two and a half volts. So 250 amps on the 10 millivolt slash A setting, the second one over. Um, if I set my scope up to a two volt, if you do your math, two volts output from this tool on this setting is 200 amps, okay? So uh, arrow pointing to conventional theory current. And so I'm on the negative terminal, so I'll go toward the battery with this. Those jaws are closed, that's good, that's what we need. Um, Re-zero this. And then I'm gonna have Caleb crank this for me so I can set this up and freeze it. So can you go ahead inside and do that for me? And we'll just look at the screen. And Caleb wanted me to do a whoosh and a, and a noise the for this transition. transition. <laughs> you guys can make fun of it. Maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't, but let's look at the screen. <laughs> Good, crank it. Clear flood. Ah, starter. Keep trying it. Stupid starter going bad. You shouldn't call a customer's car a piece of crap. That's their car. You might offend them. Huh? It's a piece of crap. It hasn't been maintained at all. It needs a starter. Cooling sensor's broken. Freaking running real rich for who knows how long. It's got a hot air intake on it. Complete lack of maintenance and it has a compression problem. Yes, it is a piece of crap. crap. Let's see if we can get it. Perfect waveform. Let's go. There is our low compression guy. Actually, we have what looks like maybe a few the yellow trace is the number four cylinder so that I just really need the firing order from this point. I'm actually seeing two low cylinders. It's common to have this, this kind of upward rise after a low compression cylinder. So talking about this one here, that one has no compression. Um, well, we'll start over here because it's more clear. No compression and then we get this kind of rise in, in all of them. That's the result of that guy. Um, but then we have a low compression one right there before the no compression one. So there's two cylinders here that are having compression issues. A uh, little bit tougher to pick out in here. Um, we can see it in the next grouping. For those of you that haven't seen this before, this is the number four firing event, the yellow trace. That's the number four, that's the number four, that's the number four. And we should have eight humps in here. And what this is, is the starter is encountering forces of compression in the cylinder and it becomes harder for the starter to, to uh, spin because we, we're on compression and it makes amperage rise. So the, the peaks of those are representative of the cylinder's compression. Um, and, and so we should have eight in here. If that's the number four, uh, just plug in the firing order, which I don't have yet, but we'll just count that as one for right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then back to one. We have two low compression cylinders, okay? Two, one dead, one low. So firing order is what I need. So cylinder layout, driver side, one, three, five, seven, passenger side, two, four, six, eight. So I was correct. Number four cylinder, one, eight, seven, two, six, five, four, three. And then we'll just plug in our firing order here, guys. Starting with the number four, and then we have three is next in the firing order, one, eight, seven, two, cylinder two, and cylinder six. So on the same bank. So it's cylinders two and six. Six being the lowest compression one. Cylinder two is also low. Um, there's other things that we can do electronically to go deeper. Uh, we can put an in-cylinder pressure transducer. That, so you pull the spark plug out, put a uh, pressure uh, sensor into the combustion chamber, crank it, and then we can see waveforms and see if it's intake or exhaust or, or ring issues. And these are known for uh, valve and, and rocker arm issues. And you know, I think this is a cylinder deactivation one too, where they 
they do stuff. But um, we're not gonna do that today. There's also uh, old school methods, right? Pull the spark plug out, put air, in, in particular the, the number six cylinder, put air in the number six cylinder, put it at top dead center, and then you listen to the intake, listen to the exhaust. All of those old school checks are still valid. The nice thing about the test we did is we were able to narrow down two cylinders without any invasive testing. And, and some people don't like this, some do. The ones that do understand that there are engines out there that you can't get to the spark plugs without pulling the intake off. So don't you wanna know before you pull the intake off that you have low compression in, in a specific cylinder? And the answer is yes, you need to learn this test, uh, especially when, the, uh, when it's available to us. So this is a relative compression uh, test, very valid. You can use your ears, don't forget about that, using the compression sound. We'll throw one clip in here so you guys can hear the difference. We've used this clip many times. Uh, it was, I think, on a, on a Nissan where we made, had a bad injector where we made a compression problem and then we put it back in. You could hear the difference, so, so take a listen. Here's what it sounds like. Good compression. Okay. Here's what it sounds like with a single cylinder with no compression. If you don't learn anything else, remember that test, remember that sound, right? Uh, as far as what we do with this truck from this point, I'm just gonna tell Pete, he's gotta talk to this customer and see what they wanna do. We've got a broken coolant sensor, we have a starter that's going bad, and we also have a compression problem and then once that's all corrected, then we can attack the fuel trim issues. However, the misfire and whatever's going on valving wise, most likely on this could be contributing to the rich condition, but we have rich condition on both banks. And so two and six are on the same bank and I don't know, it's kind of a stretch, it's possible. It's affecting the other bank. The point is, you better be communicating properly with your customer on something like this. You're, you're about to do some extensive engine type work and they think when you're done, everything's gonna be great. No, it's not. We, we don't know about this rich condition yet and I'm not chasing a rich condition when I have two low compression cylinders, I'm just not. Easiest thing to do at this point would be probably pull that, pull that valve cover off, take a look. And, and uh, that's what I'm gonna tell Pete. And at least I was able to show you guys a relative compression check and how to do that. We went through some coolant sensor stuff, some basic foundation, foundational stuff, fundamentals, guys. You need to learn your fundamentals. And we have that available on my website, scannerdander.com, scannerdander premium. We have over 600 videos there covering probably 450 to 500 hours worth of material with a split between classroom lectures of me teaching at Rosedale Technical College to exclusive case studies check out what we have. We're actually bringing other people into other experts in the field. Uh, we're, we're, uh, the last piece on premium is we're going to have Spanish subtitles here really soon. Uh, within the next month, we're going to have that. So really excited about that. Hope to see you guys there. Hope you enjoyed this one. Short and sweet. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Should, should this be where we put in the picture of me, you and Pete? We, we've been boxing. What does that have to do with anything? It has to do with this customer that gives me all this YouTube comment that uh, you'll fight them. I'll fight you. <laughs> Gotta throw in the picture. Okay. Let's go. You can't tell Don't me. tell me what I can and can't say. <laughs>